good morning good morning everyone uh, sir thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share my uh, thoughts on uh, role of composites uh, in hydrogen economy uh, my name is ketan pednekar and i am a trade specialist for energy and low carbon transition uh, for scottish development international based in mumbai so in my my presentation i'll talk briefly about scottish development international scotland and hydrogen uh, then i'll cover uh, why hydrogen i'll talk about hydrogen demand projections i'll then speak about opportunities for composites in hydrogen economy outlining the usage of composites in electrolyzers fuel cells and hydrogen storage i'll elaborate about biggest opportunity which is uh, hydrogen storage in various sectors such as uh, heavy vehicles railways and marine i'll also briefly talk about opportunities in distribution and pipelines which will be followed by the conclusions wait is the presentation seen properly uh, on the second slide uh, you have to make it in uh, presentation mode uh, uh, is it uh, showing the second slide about uh, the no, it is agenda, agenda the ah, correct page. correct okay okay yeah. so so uh, first uh, a bit about scottish development international uh, scottish development Inter national is the trade and investment agency of the government of scotland we assist scotland based companies to trade uh, in india and we also try to attract inward investment into scotland so we promote business to business uh, collaboration and also technology partnerships and we try to forge strong relationships uh, between the two countries that is based on mutual respect as well as uh, for mutual benefits so if you would like to reach out to any scotland based company or have any interest to invest in scotland so please feel free uh, to reach out to me now why we are talking about hydrogen you know as you are all aware climate change is real according to ipcc special report on global warming higher temperature thresholds will adversely impact an increasingly larger percentage of life on earth with significant regions ecosystems and species getting affected could be life threatening for some species we are already experiencing rising sea levels more extreme weather more frequent wildfires heat waves increased drought and all these events could be attributed to climate change so the world over the governments are realizing the importance of climate change and they have set themselves targets for reaching the net zero scotland is one of the first countries who is who has committed to reach net zero by 2045 uk will reach it by around 2050 and our honorable prime minister has set the target of 2070 for india to reach net zero now hydrogen is a very versatile versatile energy vector which can be used for achieving net zero especially in some of the very hard to decarbonize sectors such as steel cement industries transport and heating so many governments are giving prominence to hydrogen in their net zero strategy it is the lightest and the most abundant element in the universe India has also declared a national hydrogen mission and growth of hydrogen will be rapid if the government implements the industry friendly policies and if it takes uh, bold initiatives so the global hydrogen demand has reached around 94 million tons in the year 2021 it is divided mainly between industry and refining stated policies scenario that is steps by international energy agency 
IA reflects current policy settings based on sector by sector assessment of the specific policies that are in place, as well as those that have been announced by the governments around the world. The outlook in the steps suggests that hydrogen demand could reach around 115 million by 2030. And most of this growth would be from traditional applications with small demand, almost less than 2% for new users or replacement of unabated fossil based hydrogen in traditional uses. Then there is another scenario which IEA suggests like announced pledges scenario. It assumes that all climate commitments made by the government around the world, including nationally determined contributions and longer term net zero targets will be met in full and on time. So this is uh, this means it's the most optimistic scenario available and the outlook for this scenario for hydrogen demand is around 130 million tons by 2030, of which around 25% would be for new applications and the use of low emission hydrogen in traditional applications. This means that the coming years will see an impressive growth uh, in hydrogen demand and the infrastructure required to meet this demand will also see a massive growth. Uh, this creates an opportunity for supply chain related to hydrogen economy and composites will play a very big role in storage, transportation, generation and use of hydrogen in future. So which are the areas in hydrogen economy that would use composites? So this is a very beautiful picture taken from Nefian. Uh, a leading manufacturer of composite membranes used in hydrogen electrolyzers and it gives a, a very good a bit of information. Composites could be used mainly for the short term hydrogen storage, mainly mobile applications. Uh, this includes heavy duty vehicles, railways, marine and passenger vehicles applications. Composites will also be used in electrolyzers, fuel cells as electrolyte membranes. Although hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, it rarely exists as an independent molecule on our planet. So most of it, the time it is bound to another elements uh, or molecules to form compounds like water, carbohydrates, hydrocarbons and DNA acids. So obtaining hydrogen is not easy. It takes uh, a certain amount of energy to break the bonds connecting hydrogen to other elements. So one uh, such process is water electrolysis in which electrical energy is used to split water uh, into hydrogen and oxygen. So there's going to be a massive growth in electrolyzers expected in the near future. Lots of projects are already being planned and announced. Alkaline electrolyzers, proton exchange, uh, membrane electrolyzers, SOFCs are one of a few of the technologies which will be used in the development of these electrolyzers. Alkaline electrolyzer uses porous composite diaphragm of polysulfone network and zirconium oxide as as an inorganic pillar. PEM electrolyzer uses persulfonic acid polymer films such as nephion as an electrolyte. So to regain the potential chemical energy stored in the hydrogen molecule, hydrogen and oxygen are combined to yield energy and water in the fuel cell which works in the reaction opposite to the electrolysis. So the picture shown here is the of a fuel cell taken from nephion and the member membrane used in these fuel cells are uh, are just like electrolyzers fuel cells use will go very rapidly in near future as there is an increased availability of hydrogen in both stationary as well as mobile applications uh, there are huge r and efforts are underway to improve the efficiency of electrolyzers and fuel cells and composite manufacturers having strong r and d capabilities should look at uh, this area as a niche market, uh, which can come under very good margin. So oh, hydrogen, as I told you, is the lightest element on earth. So although it has a very, very high mass energy density, that means uh, per uh, kilo of hydrogen, uh, it has a very high amount of energy uh, in it but its volumetric density is very low. So it needs to be stored at very high pressures to fill sizable amount of hydrogen in a cylinder. 
So these high pressures increase the thickness and the weight of the cylinders. So thus the storage of hydrogen in mobile applications or mobile operations is one of the biggest opportunities for high end composites applications, uh, which can withstand very high pressures and which are significantly lower in weight. So there are currently five types of cylinders used for hydrogen storage. Type one are all metal type. It can be used for storing uh, hydrogen at around 200 to 300 bar. Type two cylinders contain composite sleeve over a meta liner. It reduces the weight of the cylinder. However, the pressure range is uh, kind of similar. Type three cylinders are fully wrapped composite cylinders with a metal liner that functions as a hydrogen permeation barrier. And we can store up to around 450 bar in type three cylinders. Type four cylinders are fully wrapped composite cylinders with a plastic liner that serves solely as a hydrogen permeation barrier. So it can store hydrogen from around 700 up to 1000 bar. Then there is type five cylinders, which are, um, which are at a very uh, kind of a design stage, not commercially viable yet. So they are like uh, likely to use a thermoplastic liner and composite structure that are more uh, closely linked. So these are various composite materials for hydrogen storage. Out of these uh, composite materials mentioned above, uh, carbon fiber reinforced polymer uh, is one of the most uh, popularly used. And we will talk about it. Carbon fiber reinforced polymer composites have been offered uh, for lightweight storage of compressed hydrogen gas for zero emission fuel cell powered buses via type four tanks for years. It has been uh, there since long. And these type four tank comprise of plastic liners wrapped with carbon fiber and epoxy resin. Although there has been uh, an interest in hydrogen as a fuel of the future, the demand earlier didn't really take off. So, I mean, the sales didn't pick up uh, much, but now due to serious climate change concerns, many advanced economies have pledged their net zero commitments. And this has generated a lot of interest in hydrogen as it will play an important role in hard to decarbonize sectors. So it's use in decarbonizing heavy duty transport has generated a lot of interest uh, in type four cylinders due to its low weight, which is critical in mobile applications. Transport sector is expected to see a big growth with more than 4.5 million uh, fuel cell electric vehicles are expected to be on the road by 2030. In fact, uh, IEA estimates that fuel cell manufacturing could enable a stock of around 6 million FCEVs by 2030, satisfying around 40% net zero emissions by 2050 scenario needs. China, Japan, and Korea along with Europe are expected to lead the rollout of these vehicles. The growth in near future is expected in trucks, buses, and trains. Although passenger vehicles will also see more demand as refueling infrastructure keeps growing. There's a massive opportunity for composites for hydrogen storage in mobile applications. As CFRP type four tanks are lightweight, they are a preferred option in mobile applications, although they are expensive due to carbon fiber involved in it. French automotive tire one suppliers, the Forasia and Plastic Omnium, uh, they forecasted production of 2 million hydrogen powered vehicles per year. So 1.5 million will be light duty and passenger vehicles. And Asia will be the leader in F fuel cell vehicles market with almost around 70% of market share. Russia claims that 40% of the value of the uh, fuel cell systems uh, will be in hydrogen storage tanks and 70% of this 40% cost is only for the tanks and remaining is for the walls and other components.
Now, European Union is mandating around 30% emission reduction by truck OEMs, which will force them to manufacture either electric or FCEV trucks. And it is likely that around 5% of the trucks manufactured will be FCEVs. This means that by 2030, we can see as much as 15,000 to 20,000 trucks per year will be FCV trucks. Exogon Purus, a Norwegian company, uh, it estimates that there will be around 630% increase in hydrogen storage tank sales. They expect the revenues uh, from the sale of these tanks to be around $1.1 billion by 2025. And it is likely to increase uh, to $7 billion by 2030. Trains are also very good market for FCV as they run, run longer distances. If a rail is to be decarbonized through electrification, it costs around 0.97 to $1.3 million per kilometer. There was a report in 2017 for Caltrain, uh, which noted that electrification of uh, San Francisco to San Jose commuter line using 22 fuel cell trains, including construction of hydrogen filling station, would cost 1.3 billion versus 3.1 billion for conventional train with overhead contact systems. That is a saving of around 1.8 billion US dollars. So it's a massive, uh, you know, saving. So the infrastructure for buses and trains are also a little bit easier uh, to develop because they come back to refuel uh, to depots, which is a big advantage compared to the passenger vehicles that need huge refueling infrastructure, you know, point to point in refueling infrastructure development. Hence, this market is going to pick up uh, very fast. Uh, and the above picture is taken from uh, Ballard Motive Solution, which is a Scotland-based company. And they specialize in complete uh, powertrain systems that decrease complexity and development time for fuel cell electric vehicles. They increase the production volume and lower the cost as well as time to market. So they delivered Scotland's first hydrogen train, uh, you know, in, in last year. And the another example is German Island train by Alstom. Uh, it has two car units which use 24 Type 4 tanks uh, housed in rooftop compartment atop each car, which also contains fuel cells. Considering more such requirements uh, will come up globally, this segment is a great market for composite hydrogen storage tanks. <clears throat> The shipping industry is responsible for around 940 million tons of CO2 annually, uh, which is at least 2.5% of world's total CO2 uh, you know, emissions. So there is a lot of interest in greening some of these marine vessels. And the above pick is proposed uh, hydrogen powered ferry in Orkney in Scotland that will be operational uh, soon. Uh, there are similar projects in Norway, um, you know, nearby places also. And historically, the marine for marine vessels, the focus was on liquid uh, hydro storage, uh, store, uh, store, hydrogen storage. However, now there is an increased interest towards compressed gas, and especially, <coughs> sorry, uh, in the marine harsh and corrosive environment, uh, it could be uh, an ideal uh, solution. So, in marine vessels, uh, the, there is no one size fits all solution. Uh, there is a huge range in architecture and types of vessels. Each solution must be thought out well, considering all the factors. So marine projects are kind of niche projects with good margins. And uh, as I told, composites could be ideal solutions for maritime due to harsh environment and corrosive environment. Now, there is opportunity in hydrogen distribution as well. So there would be around 10,300 hydrogen refueling stations by 2030 as per Hydrogen Insights reports. Uh, the refueling stations could have buffer storage. Uh, hydrogen could be delivered through tube trailers or could be manufactured locally through electrolysis. If the hydrogen is transported, is transported through tube trailers, composite uh, type 4 cylinders uh, with their lower weight uh, would be ideal solution. I mean, if it's a 
stationary solution uh, if it has to be stored uh, at the you know refilling station uh, probably um, you know steel tanks could be cheaper but if there is a space constraint like in mumbai so where you don't have much space then again composites uh, can can help you because uh, um, i mean being lightweight they can be mounted at top of uh, hydrogen station roof that will uh, reduce the overall footprint in a longer term a hydrogen pipeline network offers the most cost efficient means for distribution uh, so for example you know pipelines can transmit 10 times energy at 1/8 cost associated with electrical transmission lines and have capex capex costs like those of, of natural gas so uh, there are lots of uh, research and development going on in this uh you, you know regulations uh, have to be put on place uh, to, for the safety and other stuff and this could be a very high growth area uh, for composites in the hydrogen industry so to conclude uh, uh, the world over the governments are promoting hydrogen use to reach uh, the net zero targets um, you know hydrogen storage using type 4 composites has a really great potential with the uh, us and all other markets you know uh, aggressively going for uh, hydrogen usage in automotive sector near term opportunities are with heavy vehicles uh, because uh, most of the smaller vehicles uh, evs are still still better uh, for uh, heavier vehicles uh, uh, the batteries are not suitable so uh, for heavy vehicles railways and maritime uh, these would be the near term opportunities and opportunities will open up now for lcv and passenger vehicles um, as and uh, as the hydrogen infrastructure is getting created and the last one is the hydrogen pipelines is also an exciting area that can open great opportunities for composite pipelines so that's all uh, from me today uh, so i would like to thank you for your patience and once again like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts about role of composites in hydrogen economy so um, i'm uh, please reach out to me in case of any queries happy to you know answer those thank you